Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to share with you a part of my handbag collection, and namely the part that is the least in your face, the, the most inconspicuous, the most kind of under the radar, if you know, you know kind of thing. The first reason I'm doing that is I wanna offer you some eye candy because God knows I've been very sporadic this year on this channel or the past years or like my whole existence here. But the other thing is I come a long way. I used to be a logo whore. I used to just, just like a magpie go for logos. And it was not, it was not like so much to be walking around and be like, oh my God, look what I've got. But it was like an internal struggle that I had a mixture of where I came from to where I'm now. Long story, a lot of psychology, but we're here today and some of my favorite brands are just very logo poor. I'm obsessed with Bottega, used to hate them. Honestly, this is what marketing does with your brain, but let's just get into it. I'm gonna start off with what I just mentioned, this beautiful pouch in front of me. This is the Bottega pouch, the, uh, what are the beautiful names that it has? It looks like all kinds of different um, body parts, all kinds of organs, body parts, food, dumpling. It's called a dumpling bag with a lot of love. I don't care what it's called. It's a fantastic and phenomenal bag. I believe it has pretty much almost doubled in price um, comparing to three years ago, three, four years. When did it first like appear? I remember I was obsessed with it when it came out, but I was not sure this was my, my jam because I was hunting, you know, um, Vuitton monogram, Vichetta that would like brown up through the years. I, I was not looking towards things like these. And I was really thinking that my lifestyle would not support that. But the older I get, the more I think, Screw that. I am going to, you know, make it work with my lifestyle. I love, love this bag. I cannot even begin to tell you how much love I have for this bag. This is just, I don't, I, uh, I don't know. I got this one pre-loved, got a really good deal. That's one of the things is that you can still get some good deals, not that many anymore, but had I known back then that the price was going to do what it has done, I probably would have gotten a couple of other colors. I feel that even though this is a very like, in a sense, trendy looking bag, you can just throw, you can throw so many things in here. I'm gonna show you my entire makeup bag, which is huge, is just gonna fit in here. Hold on, maybe I'm gonna eat my own words. No, I'm not gonna, well, it's not the perfect, okay, it's not the perfect fit. I'm not gonna start like violating it, but literally I have, your entire life can fit in there. I'm gonna do another one. I have my skincare, like loads of skincare, my hairbrush. This is definitely gonna fit because the shape is better. Hold on, does it close? Yeah, it's just the fabric. There, it's in here. Is it beautiful? No. But just to illustrate, it can carry a lot of stuff, a lot, a lot of stuff. And I just, I just love it. It's light, it's great to pack when you're on a trip, and it just kind of makes a statement without being too loud. I love it, absolutely love it. This is, this, this was in the summer, it was my favorite bag to wear. Every time I could wear it, I would wear it. Love it. Let's stay on the Bottega train. I've got the other Bottega bag that I have. I only have two. Um, or should I say, I? wow, I'm lucky enough to have two. That's what I'm gonna say, okay? The cassette bag. The story of it, pretty much the same as with the pouch. It has nearly doubled in price. I almost fell off my chair when I checked the prices the other weekend. Whoa, <laughs> whoa. If 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 it if it was still priced in that range now, I probably wouldn't have gotten it, or I would have like haunted the pre-loved market. I'm still very much wanting this in the camel color. 
it's a dream of mine and I don't really know if I can justify it because as such this bag doesn't hold a ton lot it holds enough like it for me it holds enough but I don't know if I can justify having the same bag in another color and another thing to note I am the kind of person that if I love something I am very easily like sway to get something in multiple different colors and that's not a very cool thing to do because I found that versatility in terms of completely different shapes and completely different bags works better for me than just this bag in a multitude of colors but I mean look at it even on camera like oh it's so like smooshy and soft and it is a soft leather I'm not babying it I do see a few scratches here and there but nothing too dramatic, like nothing too dramatic. If you do keep an eye on it, it's going to age quite well. Uh, but again, I'm, I, I'm, I'm here to be honest. I used to hate on Bottega and be like, who the hell in the right mind spends so much on a brand like this? Well, she does, she does. So yeah, and again, branding, no branding to be seen, just that little triangle. If you know, you know. And if you don't know, you don't know. You're none the wiser. And that's all good. <laughs> Another bag that really has no external logos, like none, is this one. This is the um, Balenciaga City Blackout bag. Um, I believe it's the medium size. I'm not 100% sure. But this is, yeah, this is kind of like, this was the newest version before they discontinued the whole the whole range which i think partly sad but i do think that they will eventually come out with it again you know much like the saddlebag or and then they will be able to <laughs> charge you double or something like that but this is the blackout version i've always had an inkling for the city bag but only in the tiniest size because the big ones with a lot of like hardware I feel sometimes it can get too much so a blackout version seemed really really nice it looks like a really cool bag that you can just take to work you can you can you know compute with it it's easy it has like these magnetic closures here so you don't have to zip up the bag if you don't want to but you still have a little bit of that that compact closure if you will um so it stays upright real nice the reason i'm not wearing this bag like i would want to is it has the most horrible no it's not the most horrible it's the second most horrible shoulder strap i've i've ever like seen on a bag for some reason, well, I kind of know what reason it is. The leather pad here, you see, it's it even shines a little bit. This is this is like this is like an ice rink on your shoulder. There is absolutely no way it ever stays. And I don't have the most I don't have the most difficult of shoulders. I honest to God, I don't. I don't, I've never had any problems with other bags. This one just does not. Stand. I'm not doing anything. I'm not even doing anything. It's the most horrible shoulder strap ever. And this is exactly the kind of bag that you would wanna carry with like a shoulder, short strap, like top handle mostly. And occasionally when you need your two hands or you're checking out in the store, you just throw it on your shoulder. It's not gonna work with that. Granted, you can wear it cross body, but for a cross body bag, I feel this is like quite huge. I can pull it off, but people who are more petite than me or, <laughs> People who are normal, who are not as overweight as me, I feel it's going to swallow your whole silhouette. So, uh, but I love the look of it. So I'm not giving up on this bag and I'm thinking maybe, maybe I will order the wool strap from Celine, which does stay on the shoulder very nicely. So I might, I might just do that. But in terms of, you know, not in your face, ta-da! And again, one of those bags, if you know, you know. A bag where you really have to look very hard for the logo is this one. This is the Diorama bag and it has been discontinued. I don't know why. I feel this could be a staple in the Dior line, much like the boy bag is in 
with Chanel. I love the shape of it. It looks like a book that you could like put on your shelf just like this, but it has, it has a really nice opening. It has like this magnetic closure, super easy to handle. It can be really, really thin and flat against your body, but you can fit a ton load of stuff in there. I've gone out with a lot of stuff, like it expands a ton load and I feel that the closure also makes it that you never feel you're really um, abusing the bag if you fill it up a lot. I think it's a beautiful, stunning bag. And there's like Dior written here in a minuscule way. 10 out of 10 people do not see that. But if you know Dior, you will know that because it has that very distinguished Dior pattern. Uh, but if you don't know it, you don't know it. It's just a beautiful black bag. I also feel this is a very feminine version of the boy bag. Like if the boy bag, if you like the idea of the boy bag, but if it's still somewhat too rugged for you, then this is a cool one to go for. I, I did buy that instead of a boy bag because I didn't like the ruggedness or like the, the, the fact that a boy bag is so like hard. But then I ended up getting this one. Now, this is something that I would place like in between because you do have the logo here, right? But it's also not like the current Chanel bags that they have where the logos are so huge that you can see them like from a mile away. This one is still kind of quite muted, but I just wanted to show you this because this is a lovely alternative to the boy bag. This is the reversal boy bag. So essentially it's like, it's super smooshy, it's super soft. And um, yeah, so if I compare those two, they're very similar. You say, you say? Now the difference between those two for me in my collection is that this one is somewhat more high maintenance. It has a very soft leather. I'm not gonna take this out clubbing or whatnot. Whereas this one I dare to take pretty much anywhere because it has a very nice durable leather. But this is neither here nor there. This is not really what I would consider the most inconspicuous bag, but I just wanted to compare it to the Diorama just for a second. This is the a Celine classic bag or box bag as people like to call it. And yeah, if you open it, you instantly have Celine there. But if you walk around just like this, there's no logo. It's a very simple, timeless silhouette. And, <laughs> and I've said it time and time again, this bag takes the cake for the most horrendous strap ever with the painful, painful corners here. And you guys have given me loads of different options and loads of different uh, things that I could do of wrapping a scarf around and all that. And yes, I will probably do that. And I've done it a few times as well, but it just, to me, it feels like so much fuss to buy a super expensive bag and then having to alter it for it to work in my life and to not make me bleed. <laughs> so yeah, but still one of those bags that you don't know what brand it is unless you really love handbags. Now this one is kind of like in between -y as well because technically you do see the logo here. And I do feel that this silhouette is so well known. There are so many replicas and so many dupes for this that, um, well, what do I have here? You can turn it around and not have brands on site. Still a long way to come if you were a monogram canvas hoarder back in the day. So I still think this is a, a nice, nice bag. Staying in the Celine vibe, the Celine belt bag, and I have it in the micro size. Um, excuse the belts, I, I mean, I've been storing it away. Such a beautiful bag, such a practical little workhorse. If you need to go to the office, you need to go to meetings, it's really very yeah, under the radar. It's very appropriate, it's very businesslike, it's very ladylike, but still has a little bit of an edge. And that is, I keep on saying it, that's what I like about different bags, is when they have a little bit of something that is different to just like a, a very classic feminine thing. I feel that this has 
I don't know. It has also this rugged, like it has also very durable leather. So I like to wear it also with a butcher outfit where you wouldn't maybe necessarily take this with. But yeah, I call it the, um, the poor girl's Birkin. <laughs> I being the poor girl who doesn't own a Birkin. <laughs> but no, 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 not the Birkin, the Kelly. Sorry, sorry, scratch that, the Kelly. I call it the uh, poor girl's Kelly. It gives me these vibes, you know, it's a top handle. It has the same thing that you can completely leave it open when you're just like walking around. Okay, it doesn't look as cute as a Kelly would, but I get my satisfaction from this. Does it actually? Oh my God, this is the first time I realized that there's a magnet. Oh my God, this is why it has, oh, this is why it's easy to close. Wow, I didn't realize that. Does my, oh my God, does this have it as well? No, this doesn't have it. No, this is just pull and lift. Wow, I've had this bag for years, didn't even know that. Did not even know that. That's really cool. Now let's move right, al right along the Loewe puzzle bag. Oh, oh. Now, um, much like I would want to have the cassette bag in the cam caramel color, I would love to have the Loewe puzzle bag in the brown as well. Is it camel? Caramel, oh my God, the, all, all of the name. Anyways, the brown version of it, the beautiful, uh, I, yeah, but I don't want to have two of the same bag. So I do have my eyes on another bag that would scratch the itch and would kind of, the excuse that I bring, would absolutely make my collection complete. <laughs> <laughs> the lies we tell ourselves, but this is one of my favorite like bags to just grab and go. Such a great, great, great bag. Absolutely love it. This is so worth the money. And also of all the brands, I feel Loewe has also stayed kind of normal in terms of pricing. Celine as well. I must say Celine as well. Bottega, what do you think you are? Okay. You cannot just put like, Okay, so guys, uh, we're gonna have a price increase, right? So, Paul, what's your what's your suggestion? How much should we increase? Well, I say let's make it a little lump sum. Let's put, let's just say thousand dollars. <laughs> People are still gonna buy it. Uh, no, uh, it doesn't. It doesn't sit well with me. It just doesn't. But you know, they do whatever they want to do. They're a luxury product. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna cry here like a little baby. Then another Celine one. Am I like very, sli very slightly obsessed with Celine? Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. This bag is filled with stuff right now, but this is the Celine So Sangle. And <laughs> this is how tiny the little logo that is there. So if you're far away, nobody knows. If you turn it around, you have the same bag basically, but no logo. And this is the strap that I was talking about. It's a wool strap and I wanna buy like a longer version of it for the Balenciaga CD one. So we'll see, we'll see whether it's gonna happen, but absolutely love this one. I feel like this is such a breath of fresh air compared to the Neverfull. I'm not gonna say that I don't love the Neverfull. I absolutely love the Neverfull as well. And actually, I'm, I feel like a little bit of monogram. I think I need a little bit of monogram. And it's not to say that I don't love my Neverfulls. I love them. I love them. And I'm really waiting for the moment that they are all beaten up because that's the look that I love. A completely beaten up Neverfull. But this one just gives me this, I don't know, cool girl vibes. You know, you're like, I don't care. I care, but I don't care. I don't know. That's just me and my brain. I have two more bags to go. One of them has a funny story. I've, I think I've told you a few times, but <laughs> if you want to hear the story, I'm going to tell you the story. This is the Prenza PS11 bag. And this just shows you what a horrible person I am and what a horrible, 
what an even more horrible stepmom I am. <laughs> well, I'm not officially a stepmom. My boyfriend has two daughters from his previous marriage and they are very close to my age, okay? I'm still older, it's not that weird, but we're a modern family, okay? And um, <laughs> his oldest daughter uh, also loves handbags. It's something that we chat about quite a lot. And she, she was loving this bag like ages ago. And I saw that bag, I was like, I don't get it. <laughs> This was the fa this was when I had the phase of logo whore. Logo mania, logo everything. Um I, I actually I don't really recognize even myself. I was really, you know, I don't know. It's just again, it there's there's a psychological explanation to that, but it's neither here nor there. So she was really into this bag. She wanted to buy this bag for years, years and years on end. Eventually she bought it and I was like, I don't, I'm so happy for you, but I don't get it. But I'm so happy for you, but I don't get it. <laughs> Fast forward. Um, I may or may not have seen it quite a lot on the internet. I may or may not have just like hunted it down everywhere. And I may or may not have gotten a super deal on Vestiaire for this one. This is the biggest size. <laughs> and... <laughs> I may, may or may not have completely fallen in love with this bag. And also the fact that it's just, you don't know this bag. If you don't love handbags, you, then you just don't know what bag it is. And yeah, I grew into these groovy, I don't know. I love this bag so much. I like the hardware and this is something that I used to hate. It's weird, okay? And she probably thinks I'm the weirdest person on planet Earth as well because <laughs> Uh, it, it's actually horrible. You have a stepdaughter and you're just flat out copying her. <clears throat> Girl, if you're watching, I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry, I love you very much. This is a reflection upon myself, not on you, so. But she's she's got great taste. This is, if, if anything, this is a compliment to her great taste. Um, and I, I, I love this bag. And I also love the closure of this bag. This is the best bag closure ever. A really great magnet. You cannot just very easily pull it open, but once you have it open and you close it, it will close. You don't have to fiddle around. Very well done, Prinza. Very well done. We've gotten down to the very, very last bag, but it's definitely not the least. And I call it my Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth bag. This is the Alma BB in the, um, Epi leather, epi. I wanted to say on print. No, this is the epi leather. So this is super durable. Um, it doesn't, it's not a kind of leather that I feel ages super well. Like I would never buy a product like a, um, a Noe or a Neverfull, something like a, a bag that is supposed to be somewhat supple. I would not buy it with this leather, but on an Alma, I think it just, it's the perfect bag to be in epi leather because Alma has a structure, Alma has style, and it fits a lot. We all know the silhouette. Like even people who don't really know much about luxury handbags, most of them will kind of have an inkling of, I've seen it somewhere, okay? So they will have seen the the monogram canvas ones, the um, Damier Ibens, but, so they will kind of recognize it, but at the same time, they won't, you know, mind fuck. Um. <laughs> no, but um, I love this. I love this. I There was a time when I didn't use it that much, but now like I have to go out. I need a durable bag, something that I don't care about if it gets any kind of scratches or not. It's this one, weatherproof. Um, Snowproof, this one. I love it. I absolutely love it. And I, again, I used to be somebody who didn't like the Alma silhouette. I know, I know, I know, I know. But I want to quote my daughter who's 10. She just told me recently when I was making a comment about, oh, but I, don't, I thought you didn't like this girl. She said, mom, things change. Wasn't she right? <laughs> Things do change, tastes change, and 
look at me hoarding on non-logo items or at least like minimal logo items and I'm, I'm living my best life. I'm literally living my best life. <laughs> Thank you so much if you made it this far. If you didn't fall asleep, bravo. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye.